in this video we will discuss about sars cov2 uh, some of the things we have already covered in one of our uh, previous vi uh, videos so let's start uh, the discussion of this video so the so as uh, we are aware that sars cov2 spike protein has two subunit one is s1 and another one is s2 s1 uh, is responsible for interaction of a2 whereas uh, s2 is responsible for membrane fusion and how the and helps uh, the virus to get inside the cell we have discussed in detail about how this s1 and s2 works in our uh, previous uh, one of our previous videos you can check out the playlist of sars uh, virus cycle so in the spike protein uh, of sars cov2 is highly glycosylated so what advantage the virus gets because of this the advantage that it gets is that uh, many of the uh, foreign proteins has epitopes against which uh, our immune system will be able to detect uh, those epitopes and activate the immune system or immune response however because of uh, the heavily glycosylation of the spike protein these epitopes are covered by uh, the glycos covered by them and because of this the immune system is not able to uh, detect or recognize whether uh, the epitopes of the proteins uh, foreign uh, epitopes of the proteins are present within the uh, spike protein or not and this is uh, one of the major strategy used by many vaccinations to target the epitopes of the protein so that sars cov2 will not be able to get inside the cell so how uh, this uh, uh, spike protein uh, when the uh, cell capture when the virus captured the host cell machinery how this uh, glycosylation spike protein formation occurs is that first it will go to endoplasmic reticulum where the n glycosylation uh, begins and where uh, the pre processed n glycans attached to the uh, nxt sites which is uh, uh, the asparagine and any amino acid except proline and then serine or threonine site and then after that it goes to irig irig is uh, nothing but a endoplasmic reticulum intermediate uh, golgi apparatus compartment and here also uh, the here the virus budding uh, virus budding of uh, the spike protein occurs uh, in, uh, in the, uh, at the same time the s1 uh, the spike proteins will uh, protrude uh, on the uh, virus surface whereas other n glycosylation and o glycosylation occurs uh, on the uh, in, inside the uh, or on the uh, virus after that it goes to uh, golgi apparatus it has three components uh, cis median and uh, trans in all these three components the further processing of the n glycans occurs at the same time the o glycosylation also occurs in this golgi apparatus after this after that it goes to trans golgi network where it uh, uh, where it was it has been directed uh, to the lysosome and then it goes to the extracellular matrix to infect other cells and uh, why the various vaccines approach are not effective because the glycosylation uh, that uh, occurred in the wild type uh, sars cov2 virus is uh, not that much uh, matches uh, with the virus not that much matches with the glycosylation uh, that are been targeted by the various vaccines because various vaccines target uh, Uh, on the uh, uh, most of the various uh, some of the uh, various vaccine targets uh, on the viral like particles not on the actual uh, virus and uh, there are some differences that occurred uh, during the glycosylation formation of the actual virus and uh, other uh, virus like particles so because of this uh, many vaccines that do not use because of this the uh, so, actual study the vaccine uh, while uh, developing vaccination done is not in is not in 
uh, correlation or you can say is not uh, as much effective as uh, it should be on the actual virus and vaccines that uh, do not use trimer stabilization strategy as the because of uh, this uh, problem of trimer uh, trimer unstabilization the glycosylation uh, uh, formation is also affected uh, to much extent and because of this the uh, uh, because of this the vaccines uh, for which because of this the target for which the vaccines are been developed uh, will not be able to uh, work as effective as it worked in the during their studies and uh, just for additional information spike proteins of the sars cov2 virus has 66 n linked glycan that are identified and several o glycans and uh, this is uh, one of the uh, picture from the paper that has been uh, published in 2021 in this first they have uh, purified the spike protein with the help of uh, is, uh, first they have purified the spike protein by uh, infecting the cal2 cell with the sars cov2 virus and in order to purify the spike protein they have used the antibodies that is cr3022 and they have represented the s1 and s2 domain with uh, different uh, colors s1 domain is dark blue s2 domain is light blue and this is the uh, receptor binding domain then it is the n terminal binding domain and this is the cytosolic domain this is the transmembrane uh, part and uh, and they, this is the uh, furin uh, furin sites furin what it does is it does in the uh, when the virus reaches in the end glycan when the virus reaches the trans region of the golgi uh, at that time uh, this furin host protease that is furin helps in uh, helps in uh, breaking apart this helps in uh, proteolysis of the spike protein into two domain that is s1 and s2 and or we can say Uh, this uh, second graph second graph is the western blot uh, that shows that s1 and s2 domains are present within this sample and third one is the n glycan site the third one is the uh, glycomics profile of the actual uh, the actual virus s1 uh, domain of the virus and the s recombinant trimer that uh, uh, most of the uh, vaccine studies are being done on this trimer uh, so that uh, they are more safe to do uh, uh, these studies so there's the researchers or scientists does not get affected by the virus uh, from this we can see that the some there are uh, slight differences in the glycomics profile such as this m6 is present in the actual virus whereas it's, it is not visible in the uh, recombinant trimer and the e the graph is uh, shows the glycan processing that is the uh, glycans that are pre uh, formed glycan that are present in the uh, endoplasmic reticulum that binds to the uh, nxt site of the polypeptide chain here we can see that oligomenos is represented uh, in the green region hybrid is represented with yellow uh, region and complex is represented in the red region and this f uh, uh, panel shows uh, the glycans no, the site of the glycans that are present in s1 site uh, we can see that this uh, n17 and 61 these are the uh, and uh, furthermore are the sites that are present and glycan sites that are present in s1 virus uh, and that is in uh, receptor uh, binding domain site and this uh, pie chart uh, represent out of this uh, this site what are the probability of is be, uh, this site is been occupied by uh, uh, different kind of glycans from the, for example in this n61 
is uh, there is more probability that it has been occupied by M5 that is oligomenos site than the other M7, M6 or uh, this tri-complex site. So this is uh, just a uh, overview how this uh, uh, study of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus are been uh, going on and some some information about S1 site or the spike proteins of the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and in this the NG represent the non-glycosylated site this site is not uh, frequently glycosylated even though uh, it is the signature is present uh, it might be uh, because of the neighboring glycans that are been attached that is preventing them from that is preventing this site to uh, being glycosylated uh, so that's all for this video the reference from which this uh, picture has been uh, taken or this diagram has been taken is uh, presented uh, in the uh, at the top and also uh, this link has, will be presented in the description of the video thank you for your time